We got some yeah. problems, right? Yeah. What do we got problems on? I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you have on your computer <laughs> screen. Pretty much oh, everything. Oh, uh. <laughs> we have problems on everything. Okay, so um, you know, okay, this this problem is Harry. Are you here? I know you're not here. Um, <laughs> okay. So we talked about this upfront earnings thing before, like Jeff is going to enjoy this one. <laughs> so talk about doing work for charity. Okay. Now I am in it for me. I'm not in it for charity. Now this is, these, these are screenshots sent to me by drivers and about a few months ago, a couple of months ago, Lyft and Uber on rideshare both introduced upfront earnings. So meaning. You know, there is this black box algorithm that figures out 60 different things in a millisecond and throws you a for price. Now, it's your choice to take it, not to take it, just like DoorDash, just like Uber Eats, just like anything else. Yes, you are going to enjoy this, we zoom. These are your screenshots. So um, so so on this trip, you know, um, and 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 the vagueness, the language that these companies use is what gets me every single time. Right. I don't know who writes these things. So on the screenshot on the right side, right, um, it says you always received the earnings you were shown up front. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Take it or leave it. I like that part. Except that it says unless there is a significant change to the right. Now, Lyft, Uber, if you're watching this, which I know you are, what is significant mean to you in mm -hmm. San Francisco? Significant to me? in LA or in my brain is like five seconds. Mm -hmm. If I'm driving, putting my gas, insurance, depreciation, all that good stuff, and I have a passenger and I have a butt in the back seat, if a ride lasts more than 10 more seconds than it's supposed to last, I want to get paid for those 10 seconds. My time is not your charity. So number one, here's the results on this one. This trip to WeZoom, our friend in LA, comes in at an estimated 18, point, 18 minutes, 8 seconds, and it's supposed to last 4.96 miles. Well, guess what? Up top, we have the final results. The time that it took for this trip to finish, because LA traffic is shit, it took him 24 minutes and 24 seconds. So literally, six minutes more of his life was spent on this trip and about 0 0.7 more miles. Now, did the price get adjusted upward as it should? No, it didn't. I'm like, so that, and this is, by the way, Lyft says, oh, by the way, this only happens 2% of the time. Don't worry about it. I'm like, here's another one. This estimate for this trip was 20 minutes and 48 seconds. Well, this trip took 31 minutes and 8 seconds. That's a 10 minutes difference there. I guess, you know, driver's 10 minutes is not worth anything to Lyft. And here's another trip. This trip estimate came in at 32 or 33 minutes, and it lasted 42. That's nine minutes. So just on these three trips, and these are basically the same day, by the way, the driver drove, you know, out of his pocket 25 minutes under the old system of miles and minutes, which in the transportation industry, everything should be measured by distance and time. Well, these guys figured out the new wheel now. Well, we don't use distance and time. We use something completely different. We figure out all these things and give you a price. You take it. Well, I took it. I enjoyed the price. But then if it changes, you know, five, eight, ten minutes more, I'd like to get paid for it. Right. I'm on the clock. I'm driving your passenger. I mean, hey. So in this case alone, just these three rides, this driver spent an extra 25 minutes and didn't get paid. So Lyft, if you're watching this, we need to fix this problem ASAP. When mm -hmm. rides go even a second longer, I want to get paid. When they go a, a tenth of a mile longer, I want to get paid. Yeah, I'm not doing this for charity. So there you go. See, here, here's the thing. The reason why they want vague language like that is because then they can adjust it to their favor. They can't. Ha they don't have to be whole. They don't have to held the, their standards to your standards the same way. So, on the flip side, let's say somebody puts in an address that's two, three houses away, and then you stop. They, they know that difference. That GPS marks you pretty damn close. So that few hundred feet or maybe that, that minute early, are they going to adjust downward then? And we've seen that before where they will adjust downward much quicker 
than they will when it comes to adjusting anything over that. And that's the problem. It needs to be, you know, something where we all know exactly what it is. So if you are, you know, a little bit longer, define a little bit, significant longer, what, what does that mean? That means to me, absolutely nothing because there could be a big detour. You know, you just had all those rains and everything that were going on. What happens if the road's washed out and you have to go all the way around and that adds time, but maybe the distance doesn't affect the same way. Let's, let's say the highway, let's say for some reason you were actually able to go on the highway at the right speed, but wow. yet you couldn't have done that because let's say the highway was closed and you had to take the long way. The, the distance isn't going to change anything because maybe the road's right next to each other, but it could take a hell of a lot longer because you got to do all the stops, you got more traffic, yeah. whatever it might be. So how, how is that going to make any sense? And what def define yeah, but, significant, but, but, define these, yeah. these terms? Yeah, I mean, we need to find that threshold, Chris. We need to find the threshold of what significant mean. What does it mean? To them, it may mean half hour. I don't know. But I don't want to find this out by trial and error. I don't mm -hmm. want to drive an extra half hour and then figure I'm, oh, I'm not getting paid for this one. Okay, why is that? Oh, because it doesn't meet your threshold of significant. I don't know what that is. And I think it's, it's, it's time we need to stop this. This is BS. By the way, Kim and you dashers uh, out there, please check on Uber Eats. Please check your front screen to the detail screen. The mileage is quite different on pretty much every single trip that I've done over the last 800, by the way. Um, so, yeah, check it. Check it. Do you do Uber Eats, Kim? I do do Uber Eats. I haven't okay. noticed the difference. Oh, please do check it. Please do so. Because in California, we have Prop 22, and I'm working on that article um, for, for the longest time now. Uh, it's quite different. They're undercutting pretty much on every single trip, half mile, sometimes two miles. So uh, check I'll your trip. Pay attention. Yeah, please do. Yeah. So I just want to say track your mileage. Yeah, track yeah. your mileage. And, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Um, Kim, Kim, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, I feel like not just Lyft, because I, I don't do ride share, but I feel like all of these companies put like that really small print. And that really small print, some, it, most of the times, it's never to benefit the driver. It's always to benefit whatever company. It's, I feel like it's their loophole to whatever they're trying to achieve on their end. It's never to benefit the driver. Yeah, I, I, but you know what it is, though? If, if I knew, if I knew what, uh, what significant meant, right, in their world, because time is money for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, 25 minutes is a lot of time. We're not talking seconds here, right? This driver in three s single rides, it was a 25 minute difference. So just to figure that out under the old mile and minute rates, this driver should have gotten paid close to about nine more dollars for those 25 minutes. That's a lot. I mean, you can't take that money. And, and, and to me, it's like w the solution has to be you know, come clean and explain to me what significant is and what a lot is. Once I understand that, then I'll figure it out. Then I'll kick the passenger out exactly where I'm supposed to. <laughs> and then that'll be the end of that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I mean, to me, it's like it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. Right. So, Jeff, do you have a, do you have any a quick comment to say on that? Yeah, it's I think it's it's kind of the same as it is for DoorDash, which is the only rule is there are no rules. Um, mm. The challenge that we have with the gig economy, with this new paradigm of of work that's doled out to us via a smartphone and, and via an app. And, you know, the nature of the app is to limit your view of the world only to those functional aspects that are in that app. Right. And so when you are given either incomplete or incorrect information on that app, the consequences are obvious. You must act now on that incomplete or incorrect information. So these lack, this lack of specificity that, that Chris talks about, you know, more or less or higher or lower, these are games. And, and I don't think the companies even know themselves. They're just gaming on a day by day, bit by bit business, experimenting on us like lab rats, doing whatever they want. And the bottom line is there's no public utilities commission that applies to that applies to gig, gig companies. If the omnipotent gods of DoorDash or the omnipotent gods of Uber decide to make things different happen, who's going to stop them? Yeah, who's well, know? I mean, that's, that's that's I no, I get that. The, I get your point, Jeff. But I think I think everybody's time is valuable to themselves because if I stole 25 minutes from the Lyft CEO's life, I think he would bitch about it because his time is worth maybe, you know, for those 25 minutes, a couple thousand dollars, but to this driver, it's worth $9 and $9 adds up over time. And every time mm -hmm. you do this, you know, we need to, so Lyft, we need to 
nip this in the bud. We need to get, we need to be done with this shit. Okay. So I dare say that, that the gig economy was actually created to steal laborers time and use their resources without compensating them. So I think it's working. Uh, That one word that you used that I forgot to use, you know, Jeff calls this labor laundering. I like that one. Yeah. On this, Mm. in this case, my, we zooms 25 minutes got laundered. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Something like that though. But uh, you know, when it comes down to it, the, the whole thing is it's, it's definitely working for their favor and, you know, keeping those terms loose like that, it's it's a double-edged yeah, standard, uh, right. essentially what it comes down to. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.